Well, congratulations <laughs> on being in Sundance. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it I, uh, awesome. I'm very, yeah, overwhelmed and thrilled and all of those adjectives. Yes. All the feels. Yeah. So I, all the loved, feels. I loved this film. I, I personally love a good uh, behind the scenes breakdown on just about anything, but especially music. So it was awesome. wonderful. To, and I was in New York during this time. So it was really, really fun. Amazing. To, um, okay. Yeah. And I love, I, I love all the bands. So it was, it was great. Um, but I was wondering what, do you love that sort of thing too? Out of, was it out of curiosity or just general curiosity or was there a moment that made you want to write the book that went into doing this film? Um, so, well, first of all, thank you. It's really exciting to see the film in real life now because it's like, yeah, when you write having, I don't know, I, I find that I continue to say this, but it, it bears repeating like, the pleasure of having the filmmakers, Will and Dylan, take over the sort of like scary, am I going to get this right part of the storytelling process, yeah. having spent, I spent seven years writing Meet Me in the Bathroom. So I read that. it was long and hard and this is way more fun. It's better if somebody else has to do all the hard, <laughs> scary part, but you get to just be like, oh my God, look at this amazing film that's been made you know, in, in sort of inspired by and based on the book. Um, so that part's really good. Um, <laughs> so you did the heavy lifting for them. <laughs> I, <laughs> when you interview them, make sure you say it just like that. No, yes. um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, yeah, I think, I don't know. It's, I think, um, as a writer, you don't, this is the first collaborative experience I've ever really had, like mm. on that level where you, Obviously in journalism, you collaborate with your editors, you have a certain, there's there's definitely like elements of collaboration, but there is, I have never before had this kind of like creative collaboration with somebody else with, yeah. with where there's a sense of investment in, mutual investment in um, an end result that like serves everyone's vision. I mean, mm -hmm. it's their film, but yes, I, provided the roadmap and sort of they had to take that however they had to sort of take the map that I created and the material that I created and then invent something that both like serves the authentic vision of that thing but also stands on its own and that yeah. watching that process was pretty cool um, yeah yeah how how much so you're also an executive producer on it how yes. how much how involved were you throughout the process were you in editing sessions were you did you provide a lot of the footage because I imagine did you have the footage when you wrote the book or did you you didn't have any of that oh so it all no, just dude. came to life for you yes exactly yeah it's wow. really so that's part of what makes it like truly a kind of um companion piece like yeah. uh, that's not even it's it stands on its own and is also related to this thing that I made <laughs> like it's not yeah. it's not the sort of I don't know mechanics of it uh categorically or a little bit it's like, it's a little diffuse, but the, the, the facts are that, yes, I'm an executive producer. I um, had, I was involved in that, like whenever they, they're in, the incredible Pulse team of archive researchers and the directors and um, partic in particular, uh, Vivian Perry, who was like one of my point people on the regular basis in terms of checking in on how things were actually going, they would sort of send me when they found something really amazing, like, oh my God, look at this footage we just found of like this early LCD show or this, you know, Karen O on the bus and like the bands provided some stuff too. So there's always really interesting uh, material coming in in terms of archive, both like actual video and also just still photos and all that stuff. And that was like such a joy because when I wrote the book, there are photos in the book and the book, the photos are amazing and I'm proud of them, but it's like, I didn't even have a photo researcher. I mean, I couldn't afford one. So I just, the whole, I was aware as I was writing it and publishing it, that there was a sort of whole realm of visual reference material that would bring this story to, to further life that I just did not have the resources to go track down. So getting to have this like incredible team go and do all of that was like, I got to be the witness to an observer of the wish fulfillment piece of that, like just for me as the creator of the initial IP. Um, so that was really fun. And it did, it created like an excitement that I, I hope I was able to kind of both 
like the role reversal was I'm in charge of the book. I had to write it. I had all this sort of anxiety and authorial voice pressure of that. And then Mm -hmm. of course I'm still very attached to the book and to this story, but Will and Dylan sort of took that baton for the making of the film. They're, it's their film. They're in charge of the vision and the authorial voice. And so I got to court kind of in my role as in the, it, my role in the project was partially sort of saying, here's where I think things are, this is something to consider about this cut, or here's a moment mm-hmm. where I think we're missing something about how this really felt at the time, or don't forget there's this piece of interview that like only I have a sort of weird encyclopedia, PD, I can't say that word. <laughs> no, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, um, uh, encyclopedia level knowledge of like every last thing that was ever said in the book. So I would occasionally draw yeah. their attention to something like you might want to think about this here. But really my role was just being like psyched, like this mm-hmm. feels right. This archive is amazing. And kind of reflecting back to them, my really informed enthusiasm of yeah. like what they were finding and how important and correct that felt for the story. And then they kind of took, like I would basically sort of say, green light, green light, green light, or like yellow light, yellow light, yellow light. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of the my role. But yeah, I mean, I wasn't in the editing room, but I was, I mean, they, they this is their film. They made it, the, the team at Pulse and Will and Dylan. And, but I saw like every, I saw a lot of cuts and we had a lot of conversations. So I felt very um, included in that way. That's awesome. Who um, first, appro- like who first approached you when they were going to turn it into a doc? And what was that moment like for you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was wild. Like, so they got a copy of, Will and Dylan had a copy, a galley copy of Meet Me in the Bathroom that they got from a friend who worked at Faber, my publisher in the UK. Mm. So they were like super early on the book. Like I was getting um, messages. The way it happened, I'll just tell it to you how it actually happened is they knew really early about the book. And I, the book had maybe just come out. Like, I feel like I had just gotten back from, we did a New York book party and then an LA book party. And I think I had just gotten back to New York from that sort of swing. Mm -hmm. And I was getting these texts from Paul Banks of Interpol. And he was just like, so there's this guy, these two guys in LA who I'm friends with, who I work with. Um, one of whom is like, uh, works at sort of the publishing side of, of, I believe all of Interpol's stuff. And there were just these, these guys that, uh, that Paul knew and he was like, they're really interested and they're connected to Pulse. One of them, Brian Levy was at the time working at Pulse and the other one, Jamie Neely is, was, works in the sort of licensing and, um, uh, music side of like, obviously you need a lot of this music if you're going to make a documentary. Yeah. So he was like, Hey, they want to talk to you about a documentary. And I was literally like, who is this? Like, I mean, really, I was just so dead. I was exhausted from putting <laughs> yeah, out the book. So, you yeah. don't, yeah. You're just like, I'm in bed, not in a diva way, but in the sense of just, it also yeah. just had never occurred to like, you don't write an oral history about music and think that people are going to want, that's not, and you're not like, yeah, I can't wait for the film part of this to kick in. Yeah. And I'm going to, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily like what your goal is or what you imagine will be mm. off uh, on offer in, in, in response to publishing something like this. So I got that message from Paul and I was like, well, I mean, sure. Like I'll talk, that sounds really interesting. And like, you know, give them my number. And then I, I met with, uh, Jamie and Brian and then they introduced me to everybody at Pulse and then I met with Will and Dylan and I just I think um what struck me about them that I really liked initially and that has continued to sort of fuel the core DNA of this project is that they really got that what I was aiming at was an immersive experience an immersive sensory I want people to read Meet Me in the Bathroom and feel like they're hearing it. Like mm-hmm. someone's whispering stories in their ear about, you know, that it feels very lived and um, like a portal to another time. Not like you're being told a story without that distance. And they that's yeah. what they were talking about, the type of film they wanted to make. Make really archive-based, really drops you in yeah. the moment, all the feelings. So yeah, that's it did what happened. That. It's crazy. It, oh, good. Yeah, it absolutely <laughs> did that. It felt like, you know, you're because all the footage is them telling that like you're in the moment in time with with all the bands. And I, I, I don't know a, a, a doc that I've seen like that. 
Um, so it was really, it was a nice journey through <laughs> my past. It's weird that the archive footage looks so old too. It was upsetting a little bit. I was like, oh, I am old. right there with you, believe me. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, but yes, uh, yeah. at least we got to, I had the same reaction of sort of just being like having these weird, but kind of pleasurable, but kind of horrifying, like <laughs> recollections. It's like, it's like, hang on. That was how long ago? Not that long it. ago. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but no, it was wonderful. And uh, thank so you for, for the part that you played in it. And thanks for coming to chat with us today. It's a pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for watching and loving the film.